I felt that Waterford were coming into it, I suppose, written off by, by a lot of by a lot of people based on what Limerick have done so far. I suppose Waterford, in fairness, being underdogs, has suited us in the past, and I felt that the team were ready. I suppose it looked like they were ready. Apparently, you know, training has gone really well. They've trained very hard, and so I felt that they were always going to be in with a chance. Probably needed a goal or two. Probably would have helped, you know, because trying to get scores from that Limerick defence is, is hard, especially trying to beat them with points alone. Um, but fantastic effort up to, I suppose, the last water break, you know, and even after that. But Limerick just were just able to turn the screw the last the, the, the last quarter and tag on a few extra points to see him over the line but fantastic effort from Watford mm, Yeah it certainly was indeed and, and you mentioned Limerick's strong final quarter there um, on which they won I think 7 points to, to 3 and again the impact of their bench very evident as well and I suppose you know they're not Munster double champions for, for, for nothing I suppose you know they showed their pedigree again yesterday They're a fantastic outfit and as you say it's not just the 15 but the, the lads who were chomping at the bit to come on there and the majority of them, when they come on, they do make an effort. You saw with, you know, you could see with Flanagan's, like, first touch, he was able to to, to nab a point. Mm. Dempsey, uh, Darrell Donovan, Adrian Breen, just to, to have serious talent. Now, look, in fairness, Watford have, have good depth as well with the lads they can bring on. But I think Limerick just were just able to, to eke it out that last quarter, you know. But Limerick are a serious side. And, and to go back-to-back in anything, Gavin, you know, we've seen it. To win to to win a trophy number one or to win a final is is great, but to go back to back is a very very hard thing to do, and you just have to take your hats off to Limerick, I suppose, um, for for. For, for winning it yesterday mm, Yeah you certainly do indeed and I know from chatting to John Kiley afterwards he was immensely proud of his efforts but you know Liam Cahill can be well proud too of, of Waterford's efforts uh, Owen when you think about you know coming out of Welsh Park uh, last year Waterford were, were bet by 20 points by Limerick you know 4 points this year so does that go to show that the gap is closing? Yes of course it's a, a huge turnaround I mean it shows the way a season can go uh, it can go downhill very quickly Gavin especially in the last couple of years the way the Munster Championship is laid out you don't get much time to um, to recover you know you could see how things how things could go downhill but look fantastic for Watford to be Cork the first day uh, totally deserved and you can see you know listening to Liam it's, it's his style Mikey Beavins and Fra there they seem to have an excellent set up the lads are really clued in. You can even see on the water breaks that the eye contact is there, that they're they're bought in, and there's no there's no one lurking kind of outside or doing anything different. It's it's great to see that um, that the team are very kind of unified and um, and the management. And look, in fairness to Liam Cahill, he he kind of says it as it is. He, he didn't go up for a moral victory either yesterday. They went up believing they could win. And uh, they came very, very close, but unfortunately, you know, maybe just lacking a small bit <clears throat> physical, physical physicality. Maybe again, he mentioned that about what Limerick have done, strength and conditioning, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. just when they hit you. And Walford, in fairness, matched them for the majority of the game, but maybe in the last quarter, all of those hits and that work rate and the intensity that they brought for the first three quarters probably um, probably took it out of them a, a, a little bit, and Limerick were just able to. To, to get ahead in the last quarter you know? mm, Definitely and uh, that middle third on it was you know a real cluster of bodies there and Limerick probably and Waterford they both probably broke even in that sector but Limerick seemed to get the ball into their full forward line a bit more direct and they probably maybe had you know three guys inside in the full forward line the whole time with Mulcahy and uh, Galan really buzzing around and you know also in fairness uh, the Limerick corner forwards they were, they were lively throughout Peter Casey as well even though he was withdrawn late on so did Limerick were they a bit more maybe economical with the ball up front? They're just so good at that, Gavin. They've been they've been trying to do trying to play that system with a with a long time, and they, they seem to be the ones that have really that have really mastered it as regards what their half forwards, um, the way they come deep. They're able to go up and down there on on boat wings, and then you you have as you say you have three inside, but mainly probably two because Peter Casey or Mulcahy can can work back, and we've seen them hooking and blocking out in the mid, out in midfield and this and that. Gillan is always inside um, plus one maybe whichever that is, uh, but and and what a, what they're so good at is just a little pop pass, and it could be left or right, it could be backwards, it could be sideways, it could be high, it could be low, but their hurling you have to admire as well, not just their physicality and and the way that they can play, but their hurling is so sharp at the moment. There's very little fumbling of ball. They trust what they do. 
they trust the three yard pass, they trust the thirty yard pass. And if it does break down and not many break down to be fair, um Watford did did in fairness take them on and, and won won a lot of frees yesterday, which I'm sure John Kiley will be worried about. Um but I just have to sit back and, and admire their their pop passes, the way they can get out of rooks, the way it's it's like they they know where people are coming from now, you know. There's always runners there's runners down both sides of the field, you know, cross field passes and um so comfortable from, from the goalie all the way up to the corner forward. Um and very confident in what they're doing, you know. They seem to be oozing confidence in being able to do that. And then they don't play the ball unless they have the runner inside, you know. Mm-hmm. Um it's it's you know, if they're going for a shot, Galan is always there for a break if it comes off a post or if a ball goes short, Galan is still such a danger there at full forward. And um the only time that he'll run is when a person outside has that moment to pick him out, you know. So it's a very, very, it's it's a really tough system to break down, to be honest. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, from being up there as well, watching uh, yesterday, uh, Owen, I was watching Callahan and, and Connor Prunty there. They had a right duel there on the edge of the square, didn't they? Prunty, uh, Connor has had a, you know, has turned into a brilliant player very quickly. You know, coming on, coming into fullback last year, not an easy position to fill, but he has excelled there. In fairness, and you come up against so many different players at full forward. Um, big, small, fast, um, good in the air, good on the ground. Um, and Connor has dealt uh, admir- admirably with with anything that has come against him, and and he won't get much tougher than than Galan, you know. And they had a great battle, and um, Connor can uh, Connor did a, a great job. I mean, Galan is always going to pick off a couple of scores, especially with the quality of ball that that he gets from out the field. But um, Connor is just a, a, a brilliant addition to the team at fullback. Mm, yeah, he certainly is indeed. And you know, as I say, it was tight and tense uh, on all through, and that game was really in the mental, m- melting pot. Even excuse me, heading into the final quarter, it was eighteen all at the second water break. Stephen Bennett got a great score there to put Waterford in front, and Garrod Hegarty responded. But um, did the water break maybe come at the the wrong time for for Waterford? Maybe in both halves, you could argue, is, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think they showed it last night that after both water breaks, Limerick were able to kind of reset and, and able to pick off three or four scores before, you know, three or four scores to one, maybe. Um, and that's what happened in the second water break, unfortunately. You mentioned Stephen Bennett. He had a fantastic, um, fantastic day yesterday. He, he was really excellent. And um, shown, exact, shown his potential there. He's a, he's, a, he's a brilliant player and a very important player for us. But the water break, you're right, it did come at kind of the wrong time. It allows Limerick to reset and and to get a kind of um, a couple of words in from the management, from Kinnerk and from Kylie, to get them to rethink what they're doing maybe a little bit and to push on again. And um, Watford had, had done brilliantly to get back to 18, 18 apiece. And, and you could see, you could hear, I suppose one thing now with the crowds, you can hear the, how vocal the Watford bench were, how vocal the management were. And they really felt like, you know, it, this is there for us now. And, and it was, to be fair, it was. But I think they'd ex- expended so much energy, Gavin, to get to that stage that um, the tanks were probably getting running into a little, uh, you know, running into the red a little bit maybe for some players. And maybe the bench could have been sprung a little bit earlier, you know. You could see them like sprung um, two lads just after the 50th minute and, and they have the bench, of course, that they can do that. But maybe something that the manager might look at, especially heading in now to a third week for Watford. Mm, yeah, six-day turnaround. We'll touch on the, the quarter-final draw in a minute. But you mentioned Stephen Bennett there. Um, Owen, you know, brilliant to see him back to his brilliant best. And even even he showed, you know, glimpses of pace there to get away from the Limerick defence there at one stage. Showed him a clean pair of heels and off the hurley, you know what I mean? He has that talent. So he was brilliant out the field. Uh, people making the point afterwards that maybe Waterford needed, you know, more threat in the inside line. So would you, do you kind of play him closer to the goal? But then again, if a guy is, you know, hurling with confidence out the field as well, you know, do you leave him there? It's a, it's a tough one really, isn't it? It is a tough one, yeah. It is a tough one. You could do with cloning them maybe and have them one each line. But yeah, yeah. like you mentioned his speed, I, I remember when I was with Watford for a couple of years and, and he runs and he, and he 30, 40, 50 yard runs. Stephen Bennett uh, was the man to catch. So like, it's no, um, I'm not surprised that he leaves people um, in his wake because when he, he has that, I won't even say fifth gear, he has a sixth gear that other people don't have. When he gets going, he's impossible to, he's impossible to catch, you know, and it's, 
it's great to see him. He's been through an awful lot as a player with injuries and coming back. And it's, you know, he's so important to this Waterford team, not just from free taking, but his ability to pick a score, his ability to take on defences. And he's, he's strong as well, like, you know, mm. so he is. He has it everywhere, but no, there was some great. Listen, McNulty back, cornerback had a brilliant day. The half back line was very solid up up against the serious uh, Limerick half forward line. It was, everywhere you look, Limerick have it. You know, midfield was I mean was all always going to be tough up against um, Donahue and and Lynch. Donahue was having a brilliant year. It was always going to be hard, but I thought midfield did did well and. Um, and we had our moments up front, definitely, yeah. As you say, the inside line, I mean, that Limerick full-back line, Sean Finn, and it was there wasn't many goal chances, but actually in the last 10 minutes, Waterford mm. probably created one or two, you know, and, and Sean Finn intercepted a pass. If it was a little bit higher, it would have, it would have gone in, and possibility of a goal and we were it was all back on again then you know but um it's yeah it's so hard to get that quality of ball into your inside line you know with the way with the way Limerick play and, and with the intensity out the field but look it's another you know Watford as I say will take huge confidence again from that I mean people I think we're expecting maybe you know seven eight ten point defeat maybe and, mm. and plus 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 definitely didn't materialise and, and you know I think Watford supporters today and, and everyone involved can feel very proud of uh, the performance yesterday no you know moral victories as we say we're not we're not out for those anymore in Watford a, a huge six days now to get ready for a clear team that are coming with a bit of pep in their step and, and, and a bit of confidence back so but look this this Watford team um, I think will will learn from yesterday as well you know I hope they will and um, and hopefully they'll have enough for Clare, you know, on Saturday. Yeah, let's hope so indeed. I think an uh, notable men- mention as well for to, to Jack Prendergast up front there. Um, on you know, really the ground he covered yesterday ran at the heart of that Limerick defence as well. Uh, I know he only got a point, but you know, by God, he, he put in some shift. Yeah, sorry, I don't mean to me no missing anyone. Um, Jack for uh, a young for a young fellow who came in last year. He, he's just he's. So deceptively quick, he pulled a brilliant ball out of the air, and as you say, his work rate picked up a score. So, such an elusive player for for a guy who doesn't who maybe doesn't have maybe the strength of uh, Stephen Bennett or, or that, but yeah, great performance from Jack up against, as you say, a Limerick defence that are that are seasoned campaigners and. Uh, mm. Don't give very little away. Jack had a yeah a really good really good day yesterday. Yeah, let's hope he can carry it into next weekend. And I suppose yeah, final point on the quarter final draw. Of course, as we know, Waterford and Clare fixed for Porky Queeve quarter to four on Saturday afternoon. It'll be a quarter past one throw in for Galway and Tipperary who meet at the LIT Gaelic Ground. So, will both counties view this as a game they can win on? Definitely, Gavin. I probably God, you'd have to say it's, it's probably fifty fifty in my book. Clare, uh, obviously are going to get huge impetus and confidence, as I say, after beating Wexford. David McInerney will possibly be back, their captain. He's a, he's a great addition to have back for Clare. Tony Kelly is obviously the man at the moment with what he's racking up, with the way the form that he's in. He seems to just close his eyes and, and hit the ball, it'll go over. Um, but in saying that, if we can get to grips with, with, with some of their key men, um, I really think that Watford have a, a fantastic chance of getting to a semi-final and um, it's not going to be easy and I, I think we've seen it over the last number of weeks and of course this kind of autumn winter hurling the heavy ground it is taking a lot out of out of players and I don't think Watford probably they're, they're after they're after two very different um, matches as regards the Cork team who are probably more, more hurling than the physicality and, and yesterday then you had Limerick's physicality um, but Watford showed that they can, they can do both and um, and that's what we're going to have to do probably against the Clare team that are missing some of the bigger names but you'd have to say the lads, the lads that have come in they're very fast they, they seem to be getting settled on a, a system of play and with the likes of Tony Kelly, you you know you're capable of beating any any team on any given day. But look, I have to say, Watford and and Liam Cahill and his management team, and, and I think that they're going to be ready for it. I think the players have enough in the tank that um, 
to get over this player team, I'd probably be looking at maybe int- the bench could be introduced maybe a little bit earlier, maybe on Saturday now, based on what's gone on before. And that that could be the the benches actually could probably be the winning and losing of uh, on Saturday for both teams. Mm, could be a big factor in, indeed. We'll all coming up on Saturday uh, down there in Porky Cueve, Waterford and Clare knockout hurling All Ireland quarter final. We'll have it live in WR as well with uh, commentary team Kieran O'Connor and Fergal Hartley. All thanks to George Corbett, Skoda, Owen Murphy. Many thanks for taking the call. Appreciate it as always. Mind yourself, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Kevin. Great to be talking hurling in the middle of November. It certainly is, yeah. Mind yourself, Owen. Thanks, Kev.